Hello, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy and this is going to be another metalworking technique, one that I use quite a lot to make embellishments for cards and scrapbooking pages. Now today we're going to use Egg and Nog Plate 4 and the flowers on this plate are really versatile all year round. They make great embellishments. So I'm going to show you how to puff this flower using a metal embossing technique. The first thing that we want to do is stamp the image onto the metal. Now I'm working on some silver metal which you can buy this on a roll but you can also buy it in sheets if you prefer um, and the sheets are in a pack like this there's four sheets in a pack so it's a nice small pack um, just to try out a few simple ideas with. So stamp your flower and then you want to make sure that that's really dry before you move any further so here's one that I've already done and the first thing we need to do is outline the image of the flower. So I'm just leaning on um, a layer of paper. So this is quite a firm surface to work on. And I'm going around the edge of the design with my Teflon tipped pointy tool just to outline all of those design lines. I hope the metal's not reflecting too badly. And you can see the pattern much more clearly when you flip it over. And on the back side of this piece of metal you can see the outline that I've traced with the tool. So we need this so that we can work on a mat set. So we have a small little mat set here. It comes with a couple of pieces of foam and a piece of acrylic. So they come in a little packet like this. They're about a quarter, um, a quarter of, a, of an A4 sheet or a quarter of a letter sized sheet of paper. Um, so what we would call an A6 size. So put your piece of metal onto the soft mat and then you're going to take a paper stump. Now the paper stumps again, these come in a pack of three. So uh, there's a big one and two slightly smaller ones. Uh, they, the little, little ones are different in size. But I just work with the small ones quite a lot for a small design like this. If you want, you can start with your larger paper stump and then go down to a smaller one. So we're just a nice sort of soft circular motion. And the way to stretch metal is just gradually. Just take your time and go in a nice circular motion. Okay, so that's a start, and you can see when you flip it over that you're starting to get some texture there. So now I'm going to move on to the smaller paper stump, because I can get into tinier areas much more easily with this. And here we go, the metal's really starting to stretch now. It's, I think it's a friction thing. I think as it warms up, it just becomes more compliant. You can do this as little or as much as you like. Sometimes it's nice just to have a shallow amount of depth with this embossing and other times you might want to, if you're doing letters or something like a name, then you may want a much deeper texture. Okay, so you can see there how it puffed up that's become. So, the next step, we need to refine this and that means getting rid of all these sort of lumps and messy bumps around the edges. So, I kind of go back to my big stump and I just work with the very edge of the paper stump here and I'm encouraging the metal to flatten down around the design and when you flatten all these surrounding areas it makes the design in the center pop so just encouraging it, it's a gradual process, don't be too bossy with the metal, just take your time just encouraging it to be compliant Right, that's about as good as it's going to get. Right, so now we have the issue of what are we going to do about the back? How are we going to fill that? Well, you've got a couple of options. Um, you could use a hard drying glue like Glossy Accents. Um, this is a nice pr uh, product to use for small metal areas that you're filling. But if you maybe have a much bigger project or you've you know got a really deep section that you need to fill, then... It's probably slightly too expensive to be using glossy accents on those kind of areas. So for that, you want to use something like a polyfiller. Spackle is another product that works quite well. Something like this. I just get it in a tube 
and uh, squirt it into the recess. Now I've also added a little bit of glue right around the edge here because I'm going to back it with some cardstock. So I just need to smooth that off, otherwise glossy accents as you know it's a raised glue, it's, an, it's um, a glue that's going to dry with raised edges. So if I just smooth those ed that little bit of glue around there then it's nice and, and flat so that it will grab easily to the cardstock. Okay, so I just press that into position. Right, now we can come back on here and ensure that it's got contact with the card by just encouraging the paper stump around the edge again. And this is where you can add some pretty accents. So this wheel here is, um, it's just called like a perforated wheel. And it adds a really nice sort of delicate edge to the petals. So I just tend to keep the wheel still and I move the piece of metal around. So I just start there, move the metal around and around. And you can just see how that really catches the light. Adds a really nice pattern to the edge of those petals. There we go. Now for the center of the flower, Okay, you see that? And that very centre of the flower, we need to push that down and maybe we could add some little dots. Okay. So normally I would leave this to dry overnight and the back of the card will actually suck down into the glue as the glue dries. And once you've left that overnight, then you can cut it out. So um, you could cut quite close up here to the edge, um, probably the next day. I wouldn't do that immediately. But let me just show you a nice idea of how to make a frame. So again, we're going back to our pointy tool. And because we have got some cardstock on the back side here, it means that it's a nice soft layer to be able to use this pointy tool. Okay, so I've just drawn some guidelines. And then I'm going to take a texture wheel and when you do this you want to work towards yourself and if you go backwards and forwards you create a really nice deep texture. So turn the metal, start furthest away from yourself and then pull the wheel towards yourself. Backwards and forwards. This one's the diagonal wheel which comes in one of the 10 second studio wheel sets. Um, we do have a couple of tools available individually to, for purchase. One of them's a herringbone wheel which is kind of like this uh, two of these back to back. And this one here is the herringbone wheel. They all give slightly different patterns and you just need to play around with them, work out which ones you like. I find that this diagonal one is really useful in lots of situations. Makes a pretty edge. Oops. And you can see I'm just using the acrylic mat as a ruler. So that's a frame. Now we could cut around the edge of the frame here if we wanted to. But also what you can do is you could add another set of lines and then you could, you know, create another sort of border again if you want to. But I'm going to cut that out. This would be great on the lid of a box or something like that. Or you could have three in a row on a card or down the side of a scrapbooking page. Can you see? That's a really nice finished thing. Now we can distress that with paint. It's a nice idea to do that sort of thing. You could use white or black or any kind of coloured paints, Kaiser coloured paints. But it's also just nice, just like that. 